Hey there, this is Northern Access, and today we're coming at you with a uh, setup procedure guide for the newly released Cobham Began Explorer 510 satellite voice and data terminal. Uh, so this is the replacement for the Explorer 500, which comes with tons of new features, uh, such as the fact that you can use all your smartphones or smart devices like tablets uh, in conjunction with the terminal. So it makes it extremely easy for hikers, backpackers, or anyone that wants to have satellite uh, or remote satellite connection or internet connection anywhere they're at. It's uh, also an extremely sm or it's smaller uh, than the 500, which makes it uh, lighter and easier to carry along with you. Uh, so we'll just kind of dive into it. Uh, of course, when you get the terminal, you're going to want to charge it up overnight. Make sure it's, it's uh, fully charged. Uh, to be able to charge the terminal, you have uh, two plugs that are right here on the side. Uh, one is the USB, as you can kind of see there. And the other is your DCN. The DCN is where you're going to plug your, uh, your charger that it comes with. Just right there. And also, just to mention uh, real quick, uh, whenever you buy a BGAN terminal, an MRSAT BGAN terminal uh, made by Cobham, they uh, do not come with a USA plug. They're a European-made terminal, so of course they come with a European plug. So make sure if you do buy this online to uh, at least give us a call and ask us uh, for the USA adapter. This is what the USA adapter looks like. Uh, it has uh, the European plug adapter or converter under the bottom and it just goes right on top of the, uh, the plug that it comes with. They're $9.99 with us. You can also get them for the same price at Radio Shack if you have to. Uh, so on the, uh, the other plug that it comes that's on the side there, the USB, this one is mostly for uh, doing things like uh, uh, firmware upgrades or of course you can also uh, hook it up direct to your laptop to make sure that you're you know doing uh, things like changing settings on the terminal uh, if you want to you know make sure that it's it's running direct of course you can do a lot of this stuff right from your smartphone or tablet and laptop through the Wi-Fi hotspot that it projects as well uh, and also with that USB it does come with uh, a USB converter there's the USB end and it has then the uh, ex the Ethernet connection on the other end and if you're using a Windows terminal just make sure that the drivers are installed correctly if uh, if they're not then it, that could interfere with the connection um, as far as with the terminal goes all right so that's that part right there um, when you're getting your uh, Wi-Fi hotspot or logging into the Wi-Fi hotspot for the terminal it's kind of like a home router whereas uh, basically the default Wi-Fi passcode is the serial number that's on the back of the terminal uh, right there where it says S slash N that is the serial number eight digits long you probably want to write that down at least for the first time uh, that way when you log in you can change the uh, the passcode if you want to but remember, it's the uh, default passcode is the serial number on the back of the terminal. So we move over here to the uh, other side. We got the power buttons, or the power button, I should say. And also the, uh, the notification lights shows you that the Wi-Fi is, uh, is working. It's the WLAN, and then also uh, your standard connection, data connection. Also, too, in the user's manual, it does go over some uh, light sequences that give you uh, error possibilities with the terminal. So you might want to take a look at that. Uh, so, of course, you're going to want to install your SIM card into the terminal. The SIM card is behind this uh, right here. You see these two screws? Well, basically, undo those screws until they're completely loose. They will not fall out. They're actually locked in. So when you loosen them up, they just uh, stay in place. And then you can go ahead and flip this open. And then behind that, of course, is your SIM card slot. So that is where you're going to want to install your SIM card right there. You can see that we already have ours in place. It has a spring load. 
so when you actually attach the SIM card or put the SIM card in, it will lock itself into place. Uh, if you can kind of see there, it's recessed m less than a quarter of an inch. If it's actually if it's sticking out any farther than this, then you haven't got it in there right. Uh, we'll try to make another video to show you how to actually install the SIM card or which direction, but you might want to look in the user's manual and make sure you got it in the right co or the correct way. But if it's above that, it's not in there right. So that's that. Uh, as far as that goes, we're pretty much ready to go ahead and uh, uh, power on the terminal. And just a brief uh, few little things actually on the MRSAT network uh, that will kind of uh, tell you about the terminal itself. Basically, the MRSAT network is a geostationary network, which means that their satellites are fixed in one position on the equator. Uh, so let's say you're in the northern hemisphere like we are here in California. Then you're going to want to point your uh, device uh, to the south or southeasterly direction. If you're in the southern hemisphere, then you're going to be pointing to the north to northeasterly direction. Uh, and basically this is just a good starting point. The terminal is going to help you do the rest and tweak it so you have the best signal possible uh, and the line of sight to the satellite. Uh, and I'll kind of show you what we mean by that. Uh, the terminal uses auditory uh, um, commands, I guess, that basically let you know that it's, uh, it's pulling in the best signal and lined up with the satellite. So you basically to turn it on, hold it on for uh, about a second and a half, you see the uh, light illuminating. Same thing to power it off, you hold it down for actually about two good seconds. Once it gains GPS, it's going to start its auditory uh, commands. The auditory basically let, lets you know um, that you've you have the best and strongest signal. You see there that we're we are in in range of the satellite, so we want to get that stronger. So you see, hear that? So I'm pretty good with uh, that that right there. That seems like a pretty strong signal. I could probably tweak it and get it stronger. Uh, and of course you can play with yours to see uh, what the best is that you can get but to silence it and to register the uh, or get it registered on the um, network you hit the power button just one quick time just like that and it basically registers it on the network and gets it ready for your data connection at this point we can go ahead and go inside to where we have our uh, laptop and our iPad and then we'll log into the uh, Wi-Fi hotspot and show you how this works. So on the uh, iPad, it's a little bit different. Just to show you kind of what it looks like, I'm not going to do it on the uh, laptop, but um, if you see right here, there's where the uh, Explorer 510 is. That's how it shows up on your Wi-Fi center of whatever uh, type of laptop you're using or smart device. Uh, of course, if it's Windows, it's going to be in a different area and look a little bit different than this, but it'll still say Explorer 510. You can change that name in the settings uh, once you get all set up and running. So we'll go ahead and move over here to the iPad. Uh, let me go ahead and go into the uh, Wi-Fi Center. And, oops, let me X out of this stuff here. All right, so we see there, same thing, Explore 510. Go ahead and select that. Now, I've already entered in uh, the default Wi-Fi passcode, the serial number that's on the back of the terminal, uh, so it logs in by itself um, just like that. So now that you got that logged in, you can go ahead and open up your browser. And to get to the dashboard and the settings of the terminal and to get your data session started, uh, by the way, Chrome, Safari, Firefox, whatever you want to use, it, uh, it all works the same way. Uh, so you enter in the uh, web interface address, which is going to be 192.168.1.1.
dot zero dot one and just to focus in there and show you again 192.168.0.1 that is going to be the address that you want to log in uh, to go ahead and access the web interface of the terminal so you hit enter once you do that you'll see exactly what happens here So now this is the uh, web interface of the terminal itself. You got uh, all your data connections and uh, and of course some other things too that you can uh, read up about. Uh, and it gives you all the stuff on the terminal itself as far as the status, uh, where you're at, and uh, also your uh, longitude and latitude itself. Now you can use up to 10 people on the terminal itself, but each person has to have their own line. So uh, just remember that you can't do that without having its own line. So to get started with your own data connection, you just go ahead and hit standard data. Uh, that's the one that you want to use. Uh, if you use anything else, it's uh, going to be more expensive and uh, it's basically not going to be the same. So just uh, make sure you use the standard data connection. Okay, I think actually I've it's failed because of the fact that uh, I got something else on here. Let me try that one more time. takes a little bit for your uh, your first connection and there we have it so we uh, once you see that green there it'll show you the uh, starts counting down on the uh, as far as the data connection goes and you're basically ready to go ahead and uh, get started so uh, if you already got your browser open which of course you do you just uh, go ahead and open it up you see there it opens right up to Google and uh, you can just do a quick search. And we just typed in our company name there, Northern Access. And you see there, it brings our, uh, our company right up. And that's how you start your data connection. So, of course, to shut it down, you want to just do the same thing. Hit the data connection again, and that shuts down the uh, entire session. Now for voice applications, you do want to use a completely different uh, application altogether. Uh, just to show you what the application is, real quick, it's called the uh, 3CX VoIP app. That's going to be the application that you're going to use to actually uh, uh, dial, you know, any, uh, <clears throat> make any voice calls or anything like that. Again, that's called the 3CX VoIP app. Uh, so you can find that on the Apple Store or you can find that on the Google Play Store. Uh, also, too, the reason why I'm showing you how to dial direct into the uh, the iPad is because all the Apple devices currently do not have a direct application for the uh, uh, Explorer 510 currently. They are supposed to be working on one. Google Android devices do have one, uh, so you can download the Explorer 510 application from the Google Play Store or from Cobum.com. Uh, other than that, uh, you can dial directly in the way we're showing you right here. So remember, uh, as far as the dial in, 192.168.0.1, and then that'll get you to the dashboard. And to make voice calls from the terminal, download the 3CX application. So we pretty much covered everything, showed you how to get started a standard data connection. If you got any questions uh, or support needs, you can always call us at 877 uh, 299 9931. And then uh, we'd be glad to help you out even if you're not our, one of our customers directly.
Again, this is uh, Northern Access covering the Explorer 510 Begin Satellite Voice and Data Terminal.